So, let's, what a fantastic film this was. Um, let's start with uh, your character. Tell us a little bit about him. So, um, I play Captain James Conrad, who is a former British SAS officer, a special forces tracker, um, a specialist in, in reconnaissance and the recovery of lost soldiers. He's, at the beginning of the film, you find him a little lost, a man who's seen a lot of action at war, and you sense that he's without a purpose. And he takes a commission to join an expedition to this undiscovered island in the South Pacific. And he goes on a journey from cynicism to enlightenment. And his experience on the island is, is an awakening, a reawakening of, of wonder and of humility, I think. Nice. Um, and regarding this island, speaking of this island, how would you describe Skull Island? Skull Island is a mysterious landmass, a wilderness untouched by humankind, um, where evolution has developed at an accelerated rate. Everything is bigger, everything is more colorful. Predators, pacifists, plant life, um, this is a place you like, un, like you've never seen before. And when man is re-entered into the food chain, it's not at the top. <laughs> um, that was a great answer. Um, so regarding uh, King Kong, were you a fan of the previous iterations of yeah. King Kong? Uh, my first memory of Kong is, is the image of him on top of the Empire State Building with the light planes coming towards him. It's such an iconic image from the 1933 uh, RKO movie. Um, yeah, or, or either that or him with Fay Ray in his hand and he's fighting off the pterodactyl at the same time. Um, yeah, I, lo I love him. Now, how, why, do you, why do you think it is that people are so interested iteration after iteration and how does this one differ to all the previous ones? I think this, we have it uh, as children we have a natural fascination with nature and animals, and I think that never leaves us. And Kong is a kind of emblem of what we don't understand about nature. He's a sort of, re he's a myth. Um, we understand that, that the natural world has a balance and an order which is both beautiful and terrifying. Um, some, you know, and, and the, the food chain exists for a reason. Doesn't mean you get excluded from it. Um, so Kong somehow, in his own territory, on his own turf, represents nature undisturbed and unspoiled by man. And there's a theory that's that's also explored in the Godzilla picture that the arrogance of man is thinking that nature is within our control when in fact it's the other way around. Um, and that sometimes the impact of human beings on the natural world is not always a positive one. And so, uh, also how do you, uh, well let's go to the, the decade that this story takes place yeah. in. How do you think that adds to this whole overall story? Well, it, Kong Skull Island is set in 1973, and this is a time where the world has gone through a huge period of social and political change. The enormous revolutions of the 60s have changed the way people think and live. Uh, Richard Nixon has just withdrawn U.S. troops from Vietnam. Uh, satellites are orbiting the Earth and are beginning to photograph it from space, uh, which will reconceive of how we think about the planet. It'll seem smaller. But that technology is very new. And so 1973 is plausibly the last time we could imagine an undiscovered island in the South Pacific where creatures roam undisturbed. Um, and 
we get the rock and roll music, we get helicopters, we get um, the, the real flavor of, of exploration that the 70s brings. And talk about some of the locations that you shot in and how those added to this cinematic, you know, enormous cinematic version yeah. of this film. I think um, one of the great strengths um, of Jordan Vote Roberts, our director, is that he insisted we shoot this in real places. And he spent a long time location scouting so that Skull Island was tangibly made up of some of the most beautiful and remote places on earth. And those places were Oahu in Hawaii, uh, Queensland in Australia, and northern Vietnam. And the, the sort of composite elements of all those places are very, very tangible in, in the picture. And um, so that you, you, the volcanic valleys of Hawaii um, and the lush rainforests of Mount Tambourine and the swamps and mountain lakes of Vietnam are all present in the film. And I think you can feel that palpably when you watch the film, that cast and crew were dropped into these places and we, you can feel the heat and the moisture and the sweat and the, you know, the fact that we're all running through swamps. It just feels real um, in a way that you can't recreate um, digitally. And interesting, well, so you obviously spent a lot of time with the other actors too. I mean, this is a great cast. Yeah. Uh, so how was that, spending all this time together? It was great. We, we, you know, I think it's a very diverse cast mm -hmm. with very diverse talent, and everybody brought something to the table which was really unique and valuable. And we were all thrown together away from home in these very far, far-flung places. And uh, we, we, we bonded together very fast. We went sang karaoke in Hawaii, <laughs> um, learned how to surf in Waikiki Beach in Honolulu. Um, uh, we went go-karting, we had barbecues, we went and got street food in Hanoi. Um, it was really fun. Oh, sounds like fun. And lastly, I mean, this is a big action film, but yeah. what, what do you hope that people take away from this after seeing it? I really hope that people buckle up and enjoy the ride because it's a hell of a ride. Um, it, it's, uh, it just goes, it's such a lick and um, it feels both old fashioned in the romantic sense of being a, a great adventure, but it's also very fresh and contemporary and, um, and underneath the spectacle and the action, a lot of which is very original, there is a theme and the theme is that uh, Um, I think human beings have yet to find a balance um, in, the, in their relationship with the natural world and that, that we have to be careful that we don't um, that you know we live on this beautiful planet and we have to be protective of that um, and to let it be Excellent, thank you so much that was Hi Lisa, here with some interesting movie extras facts for you. One of the earliest animation techniques was stop motion. It was first used in the late 1890s. Notable uses of stop motion include King Kong from 1933 and the skeleton skirmish in Jason and the Argonauts from 1963. Now Toy Story, the first feature length animated film to be created with CGI, generated 1,000 gigabytes of data and required 800,000 machine hours of editing. Are you an animation movie fan? Let me know in the comments below and subscribe to our channel and check the notification bell to always be up to date with all the latest releases.